Hi there. Uh, this is Judith McNutt uh, at Christian Healing Ministries in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're here today with Leanne Rommel, uh, who is chair of the board of directors at Christian Healing Ministries, and also one of our fabulous teachers in our School of Healing Prayer. So we're just delighted to be here. You know, we've got some of your questions that were online. Leanne has yeah. them. And we're going to just address a few of those because uh, a lot of questions came in. And so we just kind of prayed about which ones to answer. And Yeah. Thank you all so much for your yeah. interest and for participating with us. It's wonderful to hear your thoughts and your ideas and certainly your questions. And if we don't answer them all this week, maybe we'll do it again next week. Yes. I'd like that. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. Yes. They were good questions. Well, one of the questions we got was from Chris. And it was, did you go through a period of not seeing much healing when praying for people, or did it happen right away? That's a really good question. And we do get asked that question a lot from people that are starting out praying. And, you know, it's kind of mixed. Like with my experience, I grew up in a home where my mother prayed for healing. And so I grew up in an environment where healing took place all the time. I mean, I saw cancer healed and all kinds of things. It gave me some kind of real foundation uh, when I was finally ready to pray because I really wasn't ready to pray for a long time because it takes a lot of uh, faith and a, and a lot of boldness and courage to pray for someone. You know, but when I did start praying, I saw healings happen very quickly. And we always like to put a little PS on that, though, because... Uh, John Wimber, you know, who started the Vineyard Movement, he was a dear friend of ours, and he said that he actually prayed one year in his church. He had his church that he was the pastor of. He prayed one year, year and people died, and they, some of them stayed sick, and no one was healed for one whole year. And so you never really know. I think all you have to do, you know, the people talk about having... You have to have the faith to be healed. Um, and I think faith is a really important ingredient in, in this journey. But I have prayed with people who had zero faith, who were Muslim or uh, Jews. They didn't have the same faith I had in terms of Jesus. They had faith, of course, but they, they were healed. So it's a mistake to say you have to have this huge amount of faith to pray for healing. But at the same time, I always like to say, my faith is in God, not in my faith. You know, so I like it when I pray with people, it certainly increases my faith. But what, what was your experience when you first started praying for healing? Oh, I need another level of school. Oh, okay. <laughs> Training's an important part to me because that's how my brain works. So yeah. I thought I needed to learn more. And what helped most was going out with other prayer ministers and being a second or a third and just seeing how, yes. it, how it goes yes. and learning how to hear the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Leanne mentioned there are schools of healing prayer, and I'm not sure all of you know. We do teach how to pray. That's uh, one of the wings of CHM. Like our first wing is to get people healed, and people come here for prayer, and they experience great healing. But the other wing is to train people, just like yourselves, that want to learn more. So we have four levels of our School of Healing Prayer that we run here each school twice a year, except level four, and that's once a year in December. So I, I watched Leanne when she came on the board and then through the schools, just fly, you just progressed so fast <laughs> because you went through the training. And now she's one of our most anointed prayer ministers and teachers in our schools. It transformed my life. It transformed your life. Yeah. I not only learned how to pray, but I got healed in the process. Yes, yes. So it's a double whammy. A good, good one. A good one. <laughs> a good double whammy. Yeah. yeah but, but stay encouraged and, and get training. I mean, you know, people, people un unfortunately, they'll pray for someone, and if the person isn't healed, they, they won't pray anymore. You know, it's like, well, I did that once, and, and then they stop, you know, and I think we have to be persistent in prayer. We do. You know, Jesus said that, keep knocking, keep knocking, you know, because that's when you experience healing. And learn all you can 
Uh, we have great books here, and the best ones, I think, are by my husband, yes. Francis McNutt. His book, Healing, is a classic, and it just, I was looking at it this morning, has everything in it. Uh, do that, get training, yoke yourselves with people, mm -hmm. like Leanne said, and we have the, all of that here, too, if you'd like to come. And what Francis always says, something always happens when you pray. I love you that. You might not see an immediate healing. I love God's that. God's word doesn't return void. So something happens. Something, something always good. happens. Yes. And we do believe in, in soaking prayer here. Uh, Francis coined mm -hmm. that term many years ago now. Holy Spirit gave it to him. And it's where you continue in prayer. Like say someone has cancer and they have numerous tumors on their body. You know, you may start seeing tumors disappear, and then the more you pray, more tumors disappear. Yes. Or they get their appetite back, you know. So it's that continuing in prayer mm -hmm. and soaking the person in God's healing power as we lay hands on them. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. And then we have another really great question from Beth. Yeah. She said, how do you always stay so positive and upbeat? I want your joy. Ah. <laughs> It's a secret. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. You know, I've always been a really joyful person. Um, I have friends that were in high school when I was in grade school in Jackson, Kentucky. And they, they, they tease me about standing at the front door of the school and greeting people in the morning. <laughs> and they asked me why I always did that. And I said, I just want to see people smile. So there's always been, I think always, that, that's one of the fruits of the Spirit, of course. Sure. So I think from early on, I had a lot of joy. But the, the deeper I draw into the Spirit of God and, and just uh, the joy, the joy of the Lord fills us. Yes. The joy of the, you know, it says the joy of the Lord's our strength. And I really believe that it's not just like physical strength. It's emotional strength. I think that you get healed in your emotions, in balance. Um, you know, the other side of that coin is, uh, I, I just love to encourage people to stay in community mm -hmm. because like even the people here at CHM or Leanne, who's one of my best friends, you know, I really rely heavily on community because we all go through hard times and, and we struggle and, you know, sometimes you get very involved in praying with someone for healing and, and God takes them home. And that's something you have to deal with, you know. So just sharing, being in community, which could be a church, it could be just a circle of friends that you regularly talk to and, and pray with, that, that keeps my joy going too, always. Yeah. Oh, I just thought your life was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's close. <laughs> no, no, it's not. I have a perfect husband. That's, that's about the limit. <laughs> so. Well, we know Jesus is perfect. and He is perfect. He's our best source. Yes. Well, let's see. We have another great question from Connie. And she asked, when did you realize that you could see angels? And how did that change your relationship with the Lord? Oh, you know, that's such a good question. I get asked a lot about angels because I've written the two books on angels. Uh, that we have here at CHM, but it was published through Chosen Books. And it really is everything you always want to know about angels. But it was really early on in my childhood, and I wrote about this in the first book, uh, that I started seeing into the spiritual realm. And I, I want to kind of qualify that because it only happens when God wants me to. Mm -hmm. It's not like I walk around seeing angels or demons. You know, but when he wants me to be aware of something that's around, he lets me see it. And I, I think it was in childhood. It was way back in childhood when I first started seeing into the spiritual realm. And then the closer you get to God, you know, you're, you're kind of, it's that wonderful gift of discernment, too, in terms of the spiritual realm. If you're talking about the demonic or deliverance. That's, there's many ways to discern if there's something evil there. But there's been such a focus on evil and on the demonic. And of course, we know we have to deal with it because people need deliverance. But at the same time, I think God had me write those two books to encourage all of us that angels are around us all the time. That we, we, we have, even if we don't see them, 
The majority of people, when I ask, have you had an angel experience, uh, the majority of them sense their presence. Mm -hmm. uh, but it truly is remarkable that about a third of the people in our conferences or schools see angels. So I think uh, we can also pray for God to open our eyes. We can. Our spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other part of that is when our spiritual eyes are open, we're able to see people as God sees them. And I think that's even better than seeing angels, even though I love seeing angels. But to be able, when someone comes and they're so broken and they're so shattered by life, yes. you just see this depressed person and maybe they're suicidal. But to, to ask God to let you see that person through his eyes, you see the original creation. And then you have faith to pray that person into the place that God created them to be. So spiritual sight's a very important gift. It is. Yeah. It sure is. We had another good question, and it was, I'm not sure from who, but it was said, when will you be doing a school or a ministry event in our area? Well, whenever you want us to. Just get in yeah. touch with the ministry. Let yeah. us know when and where and how many people you have. We are very interested in doing regional schools and ministry events because we realize not everybody can travel to Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And we want every church in this country and in the world eventually to be fully equipped to have their own healing ministry. And of course, we love to watch people being healed and transformed. So yeah. just let us know when and where, and we will be so excited to make that plan with you. Yes, yes, we'd love to come and train uh, your church, your community, hospitals. We do training in hospitals, mm -hmm. you know, seminaries. for doctors and nurses, seminaries. We go into seminaries to train, you know, because we even went to Oral Roberts one time and to, to do training. This was several years ago now. And, you know, Oral is one of the leading um, persons in the healing ministry throughout this century. He had such an anointing. And he invited us to come and do the training for healing. And when my husband said, why do you want us to come? You know, you've had a healing ministry most of your life. He said, I don't know how to train people. He said, I know how to do it. I know how to pray for people. And I have the anointing that people get healed. But he said, when people say, how do you do that? I just, he said, I, I can't answer that. So he said, that's why I invited you. So we actually worked with his students and, and professors at ORU to teach them and, and train them in healing. So we really do have wonderful schools and we're happy to take them anywhere in the world. And they're also on DVD and CDs with manuals. If you can't get here or can't get us there, yes. we have them in our bookstore. And you can, and you can yeah, you can stream them online at our website. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to learn. Yes. Even if you can't get out of your home, you could listen to the CDs and go through the manuals or stream. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, then we have a great question from Danielle. And she said, when was the first women's conference called Captivate? And what was the inspiration behind starting it? That's a good question. I think the first one was uh, eight years ago. I think that's right. We started eight years ago here in Jacksonville. We had a wonderful board member. I was traveling all around uh, doing women's conferences around the country. Mm -hmm. And we had this one board member, Mike Williams, I remember, is just a dear man. He's in heaven now. But every time I would come back and give a wonderful report, about a women's conference, he would say, when are you going to do that in Jacksonville? Yes. At every board meeting, he would ask me. So finally, I said, we've got to do this. So we did eight years ago, and a local church hosted us. Uh, so we started out, you know, not small, but not as large as it is now. And we just felt a real call to minister and healing to women, but also to raise them up. Mm as as real warriors for Christ, mm -hmm. you know, and to be able to be, to understand healing, to be all that God created them to be, you know, so we have a great time at the Captivate Conference. We it, really do. It's definitely my favorite conference. Um, the women come together with such excitement and they come in, in little groups 
from their churches, uh, and they get together and they stay at the hotel, the Hyatt. Pajama party. It, it, it is. <laughs> it's it such is. a good time. It's such a good time. They're, they're wandering up and down the halls, praying for people and pray for each other. They're laugh, just laughter everywhere. Great yes. joy and great transformations, great mm. healings. So much ministry happens during these conferences. Yes. That's yes. my favorite part. Yes. I love to see people getting healed and transformed. And we have a wonderful guest speaker this year, Kimberly yes. Daniels, who is a pastor and she's very prophetic and has a deliverance ministry in her church. She's also written about 17 books. And many of you have probably read her articles in Charisma Magazine. She's also now a state representative. God told her to get into politics and she's just won her second election to the state house. She's a powerful, powerful minister. She's gonna be speaking and doing a lot of ministry with us this year. So we probably will have some special music too. We do have Kalani coming, yes. which is always special and always beautiful yes. and leads us right into the throne room. Mm. But I think we might add a few extra special songs from Kim's church mm. that are going to be very different than our usual that really teach you how to stomp and be a warrior. You know, one of the things I think we're so blessed to have Kim's church here in Jacksonville because uh, when people come in from out of town for ministry, Oftentimes, they'll go there in the evenings. Mm -hmm. So they come to see HM and get ministry during the day, and then they go to her church. A lot of our staff goes there for ministry because it's so important sometimes to go outside of where you are if you're dealing with an issue. Mm -hmm. So we're so blessed. She, she spoke at our conference two years ago. Maybe some of you were there and gave some of her testimony, which put everybody on full alert. I mean, her, her background was so incredibly damaged and there was so much wounding in her life mm -hmm. that God just picked her up and she's, she talked about transformation. Yes. But then she ministered at the end of her testimony, invited women to come up that felt kind of broken beyond repair. Remember that? I do. Oh the my Holy goodness. Spirit just whooshed into the room. And I know, I was on the front row. And I, couldn't, I couldn't even get out of my chair when she started praying because yeah. I was on. you and I were on the front row. And it just hit. I mean, the Holy Spirit just fell all over the room then. It was so great. she'll be with us. I think she's giving three talks this year. And uh, we'll be ministering after each talk. And then we'll have healing times, uh, which are always fun. We always set aside a lot of time for healing prayers. Yeah. yeah, and so it's love to have you come. It's a very exciting conference. It really is. Yes, yeah. My favorite too. Yes, definitely. Because women have a lot of fun when they get together. <laughs> they really do. And the worship, I was glad you mentioned Kalani. So good. The worship is one of the times of healing. The wor People get healed during the worship. And I've had that happen in my life lots of times. You know, sometimes I don't even know what God is doing. Mm. It's on such a deep level. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you know, I'm a psychologist, and I always know that we don't, we're not always aware of the, the source of our woundedness. Right. And uh, sometimes the Holy Spirit just bypasses your brain and just goes right into that deep place of being wounded and, and brings healing. And you're transformed, but you don't even know exactly what it was. That happened to me last week. Did it really? And Kalani was leading worship. See, I was at was worship. a worship conference, and Aww. I just got so hit, and I couldn't tell what was happening, but I feel different. Yeah, oh, you actually look different. Yeah, you look really good. <laughs> she gets brighter all the time. I know, which we all should, you know. So, you know, whatever you're going through, whether it's you know marital problems or prodigals or you know financial. It just helps so much to get out of where you are and go to a place where the Spirit of God is and where loving women are there to minister to you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I really want to encourage you if you're kind of on the, on the, maybe you're not sure you should come or maybe you're not sure you can afford it. You know, there's all kinds of ways that God will make a provision. Mm -hmm. if, if you're meant to be here, God will provide for you. And he'll, he'll let you get here, and then he'll meet you. It's definitely an encounter with him. And we do have discounts for groups. Yes, we do. So get a group from your church together and get the discount. 
Yes. Yeah. So we hope we hope that we see you there in uh, October fourth, fifth, and sixth in Jacksonville at the Hyatt Regency. And you can register, of course, uh, on our website or phone the ministry. Mm. Oh, there are a lot of details on the website about yes. the hotel and if they're full and other hotels and the schedule and all, yes. those, all those good details. And you do get a special rate at the hotel if you register before a certain date, which we'll post. You know, so if right. you're thinking of coming, it's good to go ahead and, and make those plans. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Judith. This oh, was a I'm great excited. time. I learned some things that I didn't know about you. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, well, we'll maybe we will be back next week and talk about some of those other questions. So if you send a question in, uh, stay tuned because we might we might actually be able to do that next week. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Leanne. Sure. Enjoyed sharing it with you. It was fun. Yeah, and God bless you.